So just one quick thought this morning. When it comes to imagining how God is, I think it's quite common for people to imagine God as some sort of a, a lawgiver, some sort of a, a, a tax man, if you will. You know, we owe him a certain amount of prayer or we owe him thanks. And if we don't uh, give it to him, he's going to be mad and punish us in some way with a fine. Uh, but so it's very easy for us to have negative connotations, a negative understanding of, of who God is. Okay. Today's reading from the prophet Zephaniah has one of my favorite Bible verses because it's, uh, it's so different. It's, it's so out there when it comes to how we understand God or how we see God. So the Lord your God is in your midst, a victorious warrior. Okay, we've heard this, that kind of thing before. The Lord is a warrior. Okay, the Lord is powerful. The Lord can fight. Again, that's okay. He will exult over you and renew you by his love. He will dance with shouts of joy for you, as on a day of festival. The idea that the Lord could rejoice over me, not just um, he hasn't sinned, so I won't write anything down. Okay, I'm waiting for the sin, I'm waiting for the sin, I'm waiting for the sin. Oh, he sinned, there we go, okay. Waiting for the sin, waiting for the sin, nothing yet, nothing yet, and here we go, there's another one. And it's, so all, it's like this, this idea that we can have that all he sees and all that goes down in his book, if you will, is the negative stuff. And all of the good things that we do, they're, they're just considered neutral. They're, they're kind of ignored. And then as soon as there's a, uh, a punish-worthy, um, a punishable act, that's what goes down in the book. So then our relationship with God becomes very negative. Negative. It's like, don't make him mad. You know, even when you meet people like who, who have a... A difficult relationship with their parents who when they when they grew up uh, maybe mom or dad was that, that bit volatile and then what they end up learning without really realizing it because they're kids they're just they're just they're just doing what what works is that they learn to kind of to, to to walk on kind of eggshells and just not make mom or dad mad just if they if there's something that mom or dad needs or likes or something that really sets them off then you have to kind of tiptoe around that and just you know you spend your life or you spend your, your childhood trying to, as I say, not, not, not spark that fuse. Just, just don't make them angry. Uh, but the effect of that is that the child actually lives in fear, constant fear, constant fear that the next thing I say or do could make mom or dad mad. Uh, and then it leads to all sorts of kind of in, insecurity and second guessing of oneself and difficulty in making decisions and difficulty in, in committing because you're just afraid, constantly afraid that what you do might blow up. Uh, but I think our, to treat God like that is actually more common than, than we realize. To treat God as, you know, we, amongst a certain generation, dare I say maybe the, the slightly older generation, that their, their view of God can be quite negative. Um, that God's a lawgiver and a punisher. Uh, which, as I say, just, it leads to this. It leads to uh, a constant kind of a guilt which isn't ours to carry. It, it's, it's just, it's not... It, it, it's, it makes our faith so unhealthy because then, when we forgive our, when sorry, when we forget to, when we forget to pray, or don't get round to prayer, rather than thinking, you know, I've I've missed out on this opportunity to spend time with the Lord, we think God is mad at me. Right. So rather than kind of, I could have spent this time with the Lord, you know, the Lord who loves me, the Lord whom I love, uh, I could have and should have spent time with Him, but uh, I wasted it watching TV or something. Instead, we, we can often think, oh, you know, God is mad at me because I didn't pray. I think it's, it's not the healthiest way to look at it. God is mad at me. He's, the Lord wants to spend time with you like any parent wants to spend time with the child that they love. The child that, that's just, they're, they're, they're everything. The child that, that they gaze upon with pride, good pride. So it's, it, it's, we, should want, we should want to spend time in prayer rather than thinking, I'll make God mad if I don't. You know, so there's a, there's a very positive way of looking at this, which then leads to this, a, this lovely, a loving relationship where we can actually call Dad not only God, Creator, but we can call him Father. And then even one step further, like Jesus reveals in, in, in St. Paul as well, uh, that, that we can call God not just Father, but Dad. It's just, just astounding. So that we can in our cars driving, in, in, in our workplaces, in the chapel, wherever we can pray, that we can simply say, 
God, my father, my dad, thank you for this day, bless whoever it is, whatever it is going on, and have a, a, a loving relationship of, a profound relationship, like a, a relationship of, of, of intimacy with God, rather than, God, I'm praying now because I don't want to make you mad. I'm going to go to Mass on Sunday because I don't want to make you mad. And I'm going to not watch these TV programs because I don't want to make you mad. And it's, it, that's such a, it, it gets the job done, but it's such a negative view of God. At least, at least, yes, we avoid sin, and at least, yes, we pray. But fundamentally, our relationship, our understanding of God isn't, isn't healthy. It's not, a, it's not a good relationship. The, the younger generation these days, we tend to have kind of swung the pendulum the whole way the other direction, where uh, nothing makes God mad. You can kind of do what you want, and it makes no difference whatsoever, because we're all good people, really, and we're all going to heaven anyway. But the truth is neither there nor that we have to walk on eggshells around so that we don't sin. The truth is that God is a loving Father. And as our reading, reading so beautifully reveals, he exults over us. He wants to renew us by his love. He will dance with shouts of joy for us as on a day of festival. So the Lord doesn't just mark our sins, but rejoices over every single victory in our lives. Every time we overcome a sin, every time we renounce a sin, every time we take a step forward uh, in, in living from his grace, the step forward in sanctity, the Lord rejoices over those things in a similar way to how a parent rejoices when their child succeeds in something, or maybe even when the child just simply tries. A child might try to win a, a, an Irish dancing competition and come forth. And mommy is just delighted that little, 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 little Margaret has um, performed so well and done so well and got her wig on and the, the hair on and the, the, the dress on and the, sh the boots or the shoes, whatever they were, and that she's done so well and, you know, she just nailed the dance, but there were three others who were pretty, pretty exceptional. But just proud of her, even though she didn't win, she didn't bring any medals home, just so proud of her for, for doing her best. The Lord exults over us. He rejoices when we, when we try. He, enjoy, he rejoices over our love. And so today, let us give the Lord what he deserves. Let us place him at the center of our lives. Let us give him the prayer, the love, that our Heavenly Father, our Dad, deserves. Knowing that he's not just waiting for our next fall to have a black mark against us. He's waiting for our next victory. He's waiting for our next gesture of love. He's waiting for our next prayer. And when he receives it, he will dance with shouts of joy as on a day of festival. Amen.